When you think of Doctor Who, you think of the TV show, right? I mean, isn't that all it is? But if we look further, then we stumble upon a whole rabbit hole of Doctor Who spin-offs, merchandise, books, anything you can think of. Join me as we explore Doctor Who's strange media. Songs, they're everywhere, all throughout time, from some of the newest songs. You know it's not the same as it was. To some of the oldest. So it makes sense for a show about time travelling to have seen a fair amount of songs, and even have some made about it. But just how many songs are featured in Doctor Who? First, I need to get something out of the way. I'm only counting songs in this video. While absolutely great, I will not mention any of Doctor Who's soundtrack, as I count it as music and not songs. And we would literally be here all day if I listened to all the pieces of music running in the background of Doctor Who. However, just to please you, here is my favourite, I Am The Doctor. The one exception I have to this rule is the theme song. You cannot make a video about Doctor Who songs without the theme song. It has gone through many different variations, and they are complicated. For example, there's the first Doctor theme, the second Doctor theme, the third Doctor and fourth Doctor share a theme, but then the fourth Doctor gets a second theme, which is then shared with the fifth and sixth, but the sixth gets a different theme as well. Then with the seventh Doctor theme, the eighth Doctor theme, the ninth Doctor theme, the tenth Doctor theme, a second Doctor theme, two separate 11th Doctor themes, two more 12th Doctor themes, and a 13th Doctor theme, and probably a new theme coming around the corner with the 14th Doctor. But what is the story behind the theme song? It was originally made by Ron Grainer, and then created by Delia Derbyshire at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The Doctor Who theme was one of the first electronic pieces of music. The initial tune by Ron Grainer was made and sent to Delia Derbyshire. Here she added all the extra bits and recorded the final tune, and this was the result. Nothing you heard used normal instruments to make it, in order to make this theme feel truly alien. It was nothing like anything anyone had ever heard of. She did this by recording sounds of other objects. The famous... ...were made by plucking a single piece of string with different pictures and notes made by playing the recording at a different speed. The strange... ...was simply just white noise. The were made by a keyboard attached to an oscillator bank, and the was made by adjusting the pitch of oscillator banks to a timed pattern. All of this fell together to create When Ron Grainer heard Delia Derbyshire's theme, he famously asked, did I make that? I mean, listen to what he had originally composed. Obviously, over the years, the theme has changed, and now the original sounds really different from the modern ones, but the core theme is still there. A lot of songs feature in Doctor Who, but are there any made specifically for the show? Surprisingly, there is. In the very first 
first episode, we get the amazingly titled Free Guitars Mood 2 by the Arthur Nelson Group. In the show is apparently by the fictional group John Smith and the Common Men. With rings on their fingers and bells on their toes, the girls come to Tombstone in their high silk hose. They'll dance on the tables or sing you a tune for whatever's in your wallet at the last chance saloon. Most songs in this video only appear once or twice in their episode, but this song is the episode. The Gunfighters features a song called The Ballad of the Last Chart Saloon. It is sung by Linda Barron for the bits we hear, but Stephen himself sings a song in this episode. The song literally tells the story of the gunfighters. Linda Barron actually appears in Doc 2, in Enlightenment and more recently in Closing Time. Many people don't like the song or the episode, but I think it's quite good, especially for Doc 2's budget at the time. <laughs> Moving on to the second Doctor, he has only one custom song to his name, and it's technically not correct. In the Macro Terror, there is music on the speakers. And it isn't an already existing song, so it must have been custom made for the episode, right? Wrong. This song was actually made for BBC's stock music library, and was simply titled Chromophone Band, and was available for all TV shows to use, so Doctor Who used it. So no, it wasn't made for Doctor Who. So why did I mention it? Because this was actually written by Delia Derbyshire. If you don't know who they are, then rewatch this video. Again, the third has only one custom song to his name, but it's unique because it was made by John Perry himself. Apparently he made it by saying gibberish to the tune of the Christmas carol, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Against the Saracen we are born To free the tomb of Christ our Lord We'll put the known world to the sword Again, another Doctor with only one song to his name, the Fifth Doctor has the King song. Peter Howell supplied the music, and Terence Dudley supplied the lyrics, and it was sung by Gerald Flood. The song was actually designed to be a leitmotif for Companion Chameleon. Due to Chameleon being a failure, he only appeared in two episodes, and the song only appeared in one episode, The King's Demons. <laughs> In Delta and the Bannerman there is a big disco scene and many songs are played, but only one of them was made for the show. Here to the Future was written by Kath McCulloch, who also made the 7th Doctor theme tune. Another one by Kevin McCulloch is Anachronistic Noise and Remembrance of the Daleks. It's titled because it's the music that comes out of Ace's boombox, which is in the wrong time zone. If you don't know what anachronistic means, it means something's in the wrong time zone. For example, a car in the Stone Age, or here, a boombox in 1963. Actually finding this song online was near to impossible, and I had to find it in this really small music website. It's on Spotify and Apple Music and some other websites, but on all of them you can't actually play the song anymore. So I've decided to put it on my channel for everyone to listen to. Link in the description. Five, six, seven, eight. It's a doctor at the gate. Also in remembrance of the Daleks is a little girl's song. It has no name and the creator is unknown. Though it's likely by Ben Aronovich and created by Kev McCulloch, though that is purely speculation by me. 
It is based on one two buck on my shoe, except plays slowly and with different lyrics, which it only has one of. <laughs> I'm grouping three together here. Corny Pine is a well-known jazz musician and appeared in Silver Nemesis as himself, the third ever person to appear as themselves in the show. He wrote three pieces for the show, titled P. Pi Po, Adrian's Affair and Frank's Quest. I could not find any of them online, so I sent an email to Corny Pine's management to see if they had anything. And I got nothing, probably because I'm a very small YouTuber and also because they probably don't care about something from 35 years ago. So unfortunately, the only way to listen to these songs is in the show. Well, I walk out today, and the world seemed a restless place. Moving on to the modern series, we start strong with the 10th Doctor's famous leitmotif, Song for Ten. Despite this, it only appears in two episodes, the 10th Doctor's first episode, The Christmas Invasion, and School Reunion. It was written by Murray Gold and sung by Tim Phillips. Emotional songs on this list is Doomsday, made for the episode Doomsday, but it also features in Partners of Time and The Stolen Earth, written by Murray Gold and sung by Melanie Papenhaim. Not much else to say about it, but it is great. Oh my girl, my girl, my precious girl, I love you, you understand. So reel me in, my precious girl, well, come on, take me home, cause my body's tired of traveling. This one is a banger, Love Don't Roam, written by Murray Gold and sung by Neil Hannon. Unfortunately, it only features in The Runaway Bride, so I really like this song. You weren't the sort of guy I thought would stick around, hey but it don't have to be eternally. My bad, bad angel put the devil in me, you put the devil in me. One of the more well-known custom Doctor Who songs is My Angel Put the Devil in Me, written by Murray Gold and sung by Miranda Raisin. Miranda plays Tallulah in Daleks Take Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks, in which she sings this song. It is also heard in The End of Time Part 2, however this time sung by Yamit Mamo instead. As the name suggests, Astrid's theme is Astrid's leitmotif. It was written by Murray Gold and sung by Melanie Papenhaim, who sung Doomsday earlier. It only features in Voyage of the Damned. Once I found the stowaway upon my ship on Christmas Day, I was fair so I gave him a chance. Out of the three songs played by the band of the Titanic, only one was made for the show. The Stowaway was written by Murray Gold and sung by Yamit Mamo, who appears in this band playing the song in The Voyage of the Damned. The song makes references to Christmas, which references the episode being Christmas special. This is another quite emotional song, and it's titled Songs of Freedom and Captivity. It was written by Murray Gold and sung by Mark Chambers. It features in Planet of the Ood, and in the show it is said to be sung by the Ood. It also later features in Journey's End, where it is sung by the Crouch End Festival Chorus.
This song is meant to be sung at a church, and it sounds like it. It's called We Shall Farewell. It was written by Mary Gold and sung by the Crouching Festival Chorus, who also sang the Jones End version of Songs of Freedom at Captivity. It features in the End of Time Part 1. The We Shall Farewell part is meant to say they shall farewell, as in live well, but it's also saying farewell to David Tennant as the 10th Doctor. <laughs> One of my personal favourite songs for Doctor Who is Valley de Shen. It was written by Murray Gold, sung by Mark Chambers and the Crouching Festival Chorus. Mark Chambers previously sang Songs of Freedom and Captivity, and the Crouching Festival Chorus sang the Journey's End version of Songs of Freedom and Captivity, and We Shall Farewell. It features in The End of Time Part 2. This song features as Abigail's leitmotif. It is simply titled Abigail's Song. It was written by Mary Gold and sung by Catherine Jenkins, who plays Abigail. She's a well-known classical singer as well. It features in A Christmas Carol. This song is quite unique, it's actually a key plot point to the episode. It's called The Long Song and features in The Ring of Zagakuten, in which it soothes the enemy of the episode. It was written by Murray Gold and sung by Amelia Jones, who plays Mary in the episode. If you recognise this song, then well done, because I didn't. This is an electric guitar remix of the Doctor Who theme tune. It's played by Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor. It's not known who wrote this version, but it's probably Murray Gold or Peter Capaldi. It features in The Magician's Apprentice. This is a very strange fourth wall break, although according to Remembers of the Daleks, Doctor Who exists in the Doctor Who universe, so maybe the Doctor is a fan. Another song played by the Doctor in his electric guitar is Clara. This song was originally played in the soundtrack as Clara's leitmotif, but it appears here as a song. The Doctor plays it in Hellbent after he forgets about Clara. And that is all of Doctor Who's custom songs, but we're not done yet. We still have all the other songs that are featured in the show. Now for all of these, I'm going to simply play the song, as there's a lot of them and not a lot to talk about. If I want to say something, then I'll jump in. I understand a lot of you will not want to watch this next bit, so if you don't, skip ahead to the time tune on the screen. I'm now going to list all of the songs in Doctor Who. She's got a ticket to ride. She's Jumping in straight away, this song's inclusion in Doctor Who is very famous. The Beatles appeared on an episode of Top of the Pops in April 1965. 508 episodes of Top of the Pops are missing, and this is one of them. However, footage from the Beatles' performance appears in Doctor Who, and this is the only surviving piece of that episode of Top of the Pops. Over the sea to sky Oh, 
there for certain because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. <laughs> This song was heard in the original broadcast of the episode, but when the episode was released on DVD in 2001, it was taken out due to copyright. They added it back in for the 2011 release. Two eyes of blue, but oh, what those five foot could do. Due to copyright, this song does not feature on the DVD release. I'm picking up vibrations. She's giving me the... You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Bye. 
that's the way to the zoo, that's the way to the zoo, the monkey house. I could not find this song anywhere other than the show, which leads me to believe that it's stock music, but I'm not certain. We don't even know the title or who wrote it, but Wikipedia lists it as all dressed up. Sorry about that. When I saw this song, I knew I had to do it. Back to the songs. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. Yes, you do remember that song. It's the same song John Pertwee based the tune of his Venusian lullaby on. Now back to the songs. The Christmas Invasion started the tradition of putting this song in every Doctor Who Christmas special. However, it only appears in four Christmas specials and the power of three. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit me. Hit me. Just
feature in Doctor Who. Unfortunately, this video ended up being really long, so I had to cut it into two parts. Part two should be out soon, or if you're watching this in the future, it should already be out. But yeah, that's the end of this video. What was your favourite song? Personally, I liked Love Don't Roam and Valet de Chem. Comment down below what you think is the best. If you like this video, please do leave a like and consider subscribing as it helps out a ton. Bye!